the major thing about life is that you don't want to be hindered. You don't want to be hindered from your inheritance. You don't want to be hindered from having the things that you're supposed to have and experiencing what you're supposed to experience. The seed, when you sow it, you are inviting the Holy Ghost to bring order to your path, to order your steps. The seed is an intercession device where the soul of the sower that's sowing that seed is coming into the chambers of God's righteousness. So wherever he wants there to be changes and things fixed about you, about your surroundings, about your workplace, about your finances, about your health, those things start to be targeted by the power of God. Demons are very wise when it comes to the agenda of stopping people from sowing. There's people that go five months without sowing seeds. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. There's people that go six months without sowing seeds. They go seven weeks without sowing seeds. That's crazy. Because that seed is an investment into God's schedule for your life. So you can't walk in the schedule. Ananias and Sapphira had a schedule in the seed that they were scheduled to sow. They never sowed the seed. They died, which means that they never lived out the schedule. They were disconnected from the schedule. That's scary. Isaac had a schedule of a hundredfold, but he's in the famine with everybody else. So the schedule is in the seed. Is not in God loving Isaac. Because God loved Isaac when he in the famine. God loved Isaac when he is conforming to the world. See, the world is non-sores. Because the, brain, the world is a mindset. We have two different worlds. We have the world and the existence of creation. The creation of the world. But then we have the world, which is the system that the serpent introduced to man, which is Satan, so that you would think contrary to God and you won't catch the thoughts to honor him, to respect him, to obey him. So there's people that God loves, but they're in the world. And in the world is the thought life of dishonor. In the world is the thought life of robbing God. In the world is the thought life of not creating an experience of pleasure for the Lord. So the Lord doesn't get anything from you that he wanted to get from you. Remember, the Father seeketh those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Worshiping the Father in spirit means and in truth means Worship me the way that I told you I want to be worshipped. Not the way that you think I should be worshipped. Not the way that makes you feel good about yourself when you say that you're worshipping. Worship me the way that I said I want to be worshipped. The Father is seeking those that will worship him the way that he said he wants to be worshipped. Not Imagine going to McDonald's and when you get to, or imagine you going to Applebee's, imagine you going anywhere. Imagine you going Chick-fil-A, imagine you going to Panera Bread. You pull up and they give you an order and we say, they, they say to you, I think you should have this. Huh? You think I should have what? People will be so angry and furious if they went to a drive through and the drive through person tell you, I think you should have this. They didn't ask you. They said, I think you should have this. And you say, no, I want this. I don't even like that. This is not my order. I want to order. They say, no, 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 I, we won't give you this. And that's what people do to the Lord. Your life doesn't move when you give the Lord. You're not worshiping you when you give the Lord what you think he should have. You give him what he said he wants. And God loveth the cheerful giver. 
Now, you never want to sow a seed that is incorrect. An incorrect seed doesn't, doesn't worship God. It's the same way like you go to somebody's baby shower, they say, I like all roses. And you start, you bring them some weeds. You bring them some, some withered plants. See, you brought them something, but it is, is incorrect. So what's going to happen to that mood? Is they going to receive it? Is they going to be happy about it? No, because that's not what they asked for. The Holy Spirit is with the body of Christ to teach them how to sow the exact amount of money that the Father wants to see them sow. Everybody's money sowing level is different because everybody has spent their time differently. Everybody has produced differently. Everybody has acquired finances differently. So it's not going to be the same level of sowing for everybody. When people have more wisdom at work in them, they have more money to sow. So the Holy Spirit will pull on you to sow big because there's other people, their wisdom is not high like that to sow big. When the Holy Spirit could use you to stand in the gap and sow larger amounts of money like you're sowing bountifully, he rewards you and he pays you back double. It's not like you're losing a lot of money. It seems in the moment, if you're looking in the natural, okay, the Lord telling me it's so 2,000. The Lord telling me, telling me it's so 3,000. The Lord telling me it's so 4,000. The Lord telling me it's so 10,000. The Lord telling me it's so 1,000. The Lord telling me it's so 800. At the time, it looks like the, you're, you're losing money according to the natural. You're not losing money. Your financial status is being upgraded by the Father in heaven. The exciting thing about when the Holy Spirit gets to that zone of pulling on you to stand in the gap, to sow at a higher rate, at a higher amount, because he's going to take that bountifulness that you're sowing at and give you bountiful returns. So money gets bigger when you sow bigger. The money that you receive from God becomes bigger when you sow bigger. I don't trust a preacher that don't talk about money. Because for a preacher to operate with money, receive money, and then they don't have no boldness to talk about money, that's a trickster. How are you ashamed of the financial anointing? How are you ashamed of the whole counsel of God, the kingdom of heaven? And then how did you come out? And then you don't want to let the body of Christ know how to come out as well. So there has to be a boldness in, in the apostle's office. In apostleship, the Holy Spirit works with the apostle to deliver the body of Christ from robbing God so that they could experience all the plans that are in the seed once they sow it. It's so, it's so wild that people are walking today as seeds that were sown in the past, and now they are the seed that has grown up, but they don't understand how seeds grow up. But you're a seed that has grown up. Look at you. You got arms and legs. You got body parts. And your body parts even grow. Your fingers wasn't the same size when you was two years old. Now you're 28. Now you're 48. Look at your eyes, your ears. They wasn't the same way as they were in the womb. So seeds grow. And you know that for a fact because you can look at your own self. Your shoulders wasn't this size when you was three years old. It's bigger now because you're a grown up or you're a teenager or you're an adult, you're a senior. Your body parts grow. And so it's easy for you to comprehend that the seed, the seed grows up because you yourself have grown up and you can look at your own body and see, I used to be a seed. So where did my fingers come from? Because I started off as a seed. 
So the seed had fingers inside of it. The, the seed had legs inside of it. Oh, this is so amazing to me. The seed had eyeballs inside of it. But when the seed was sown, you didn't see no eyeballs. The seed had eyesight and hearing inside of it. It had a voice box inside of it, but you didn't see the voice. You didn't hear the voice when the seed was sown. But when the seed grows up, you hear somebody talking. You hear somebody articulating words. Sometimes their vocabulary is real big. They speak in compound words, words with many syllables. But think about that. That was a seed that you couldn't hear a voice at one time. So you understand that the seed has a mysterious translation and growth to it. That when you sow a seed, you're not looking at the ending of what that seed becomes. But when the end happens, you'll see the seed. You'll see the harvest of that seed. And the same way that you were sown as a seed, nobody saw your eyeballs, but now you can see your eyeballs in the mirror. Nobody heard your voice, but now everybody can hear your voice. You could talk as loud as you want. You could scream. You could sing. You got different type of voices. You got a voice that you answer a bill collector with. You got a voice that you answer the cops with. You got a voice that you answer a judge with. You got a voice that you answer somebody that has said something demeaning to you with. You have different voices inside of you that you can activate. Oh, oh, oh. You could talk deep. Ah, ah. You could talk high. Hello, hello, hello. You, you could talk with intention. You have different type of themes to your voice. This was all inside of a seed. So the same way when you sow seed, there are a lot of invisible benefits that are activated when you sow. You don't want your life to be hindered because you're not sowing seed. Every sower, every person that the Holy Spirit picks to sow, they will have to overcome the spirit of procrastination. Because the spirit of procrastination uh, that demon that hinders you from sowing seed enjoys your torments, enjoys your poverty, enjoys your hardships, enjoys the times in your life where you're going through difficulty. That's why demons work so hard. They actually join together to stop you from sowing. That even if you're making money, they'll have you go get a place. You go get the place. Now the place is occupying all your finances. There's a lot of times people move out of a place. They were sowing when they was in the place. Then they go get their own place. They're so eager to leave. They, they leave. Now they don't got no money or so. That happens a lot. Or uh, somebody go buy a new car. Now they ain't got no money or so. They're trying to pay the bill every month. People pit their self in a bind. That's why poverty is so rampant. And people that call themselves believers because they will do things that jeopardize their sowing. Now they can't sow because now they're trying to handle this and fix this and make this happen and, 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 and maintain this. But maintaining the presence of God and honoring his presence is more important than all of that. Because if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, all those other things will be added unto you. Many people are not getting all the other things that's supposed to be added unto them because they're trying to add it unto them while robbing, the seed, robbing God of the seed. When if you will give God the seed and be faithful to him, he will promote you to be a ruler over much. Your seed sowing must be accompanied by meditation of the word and you must have a record of people that have sown the seed and have seen the results of the harvest. Isaac was going through hardships because he stopped sowing seeds. He stopped honoring God with his finances. He conformed himself to the world. And those demon spirits was having a field day with Isaac. And he's a son of Abraham. He's the son of promise. He got an inheritance. He got wealth waiting for him. And he going through hardships unnecessarily. People go through pain. They go through poverty. They go through problems unnecessarily because they won't sow. And that seed was going to bring prosperity. 
That seed was going to bring increase. David prayed a powerful prayer. I think that's Psalm 118, verse 25. I may be wrong, but I think it's Psalm 118. He says, send now prosperity. See, David understood that prosperity was waiting for him. That's why he could tell the Lord to send it now. So you have to have an understanding that prosperity is packaged for you. Prosperity in materialistic possessions, prosperity in your clothing, prosperity in your jewelry, prosperity in your apparel, prosperity in your appearance, prosperity in your living arrangements, prosperity in your transportation. Prosperity is waiting for you. Once you understand that, it becomes easier for you to honor God because you know that the God that you're honoring is going to release the prosperity that he has prepared for you. People are not prophetic. If they were prophetic, they would be sowing like crazy. That's what took my sowing to the next degree because the prophetic anointing, when you got a true prophetic anointing, you'll be able to see even your inheritance, the things that God has for you that's hidden in a seed that you will sow. Now, we have to see that you sow in your behavior of right decisions. We call that sowing into the spirit. When you want to cut somebody out, you don't do it. When you want to lust after somebody, you don't do it. When you want to pursue somebody and you're not supposed to pursue them, you don't do it. All those things, what happens is um, that those are seeds into the spirit. When you spend your time correctly, when you pray, when you constrain. When you help your man of God, when you can go help every other man of God, but you stay loyal to your man of God to help him out. And you give 100% of yourself to push his vision, push his ministry. Those things do not go unattended by God. He watches. Your life is underneath supervision when you're sowing and when you're not sowing. And God has full record of what you're sowing. He knows it. That's why he's able to promote people correctly, properly. Because he's a watcher of your deeds and your seeds. This is a time where if you were so, the angels that already have been given an assignment to help you get to your abundance, your land flowing with milk and honey, the appearance of increase, these angels will assist you if you just will trust God. Now, the Holy Spirit also guides people when he's promoting you and sowing. He guides you to new work assignments because that's, that's how you get money. So he pulls on you to become more sacrificial. If you look at it, for you to exercise your body, for you to do anything in life, you have to embrace becoming sacrificial. That means that you take time and do things that you don't always feel like doing. That's what it means to become sacrificial. That you utilize time to perform something even though it's painful. Working out, exercising, lifting weights. You're working out even though it's painful. So when the Holy Spirit want to increase you in sowing, he increases your problem-solving abilities. He increases your pleasurability to somebody that could pay you. And so that you'll become helpful. You'll become peaceful. You're a peacemaker in their environment. Joseph was unlocking money by his pleasurable ability, his loyalty, his honesty, his faithfulness, his work ethic for Potiphar, Joseph. The seed, it increases in one's life because God is able to minister it to you at a specific place. And he's able to guide you into the work that will gain more seed. Mark chapter 4, look what it says in verse 26. So is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. See, it's about casting seed. And should sleep. See, you got to go to sleep. Sleep is divine. That means that you have to be in a restful place. 
Seed sowing should not make you have an anxiety attack. That means that you're not handling the anointing correctly. Because if you understand what the seed is doing, why would you get anxious? Why would you get nervous? Why would you get impatient? Why will you get distracted? Because you want the harvest to come. How the harvest going to come to you if your soul is not in the location of prosperity? Prosperity finds your hands because it can find your soul. Wow. Prosperity finds your hands because it can find your soul. So it's more inward before it's outward. It becomes outward, but it got to be inward first. Your soul got to be prosperous, which means that it's in faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, love. You're in expectation, you're in obedience, and you're, in, you're, you're pleasuring God with what he sees. How you're spending your moments, how you're praising him, how you're pursuing him. And you got to learn the law of asking, seeking, and knocking. These three elements are very important if you're going to make it in this life and be wise. I was shooting today in the gym and the, the, um, that Spanish guy, when I got to half court, he, 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 he uh, called me aside and he was telling me, he said, everybody should be watching you play right now. You should have an audience. What he was telling me was, I see you make all these shots. And then he said something. He said, I'm a learner. Uh, he said, I like to lear learn by watching people. I say, you're smart. Asking, seeking, and knocking is the key. It's the door into the knowledge that you're supposed to have to dominate the way that God wants you to dominate. Should sleep, rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. Wow. I'm going to continue this. This is so amazing. He knoweth not how. Just think about that statement. He knoweth not how. So seed sowing, it multiplies in ways that you knoweth not how because it's being done in the invisible realm by the Lord who loves you the Lord Jesus who cares about you. He is receiving your seed as you sow into him. And it is his power that you're connecting to. It's his glory that you're connecting to. And that fire of God burning up all demons of poverty, sickness, disease, wickedness, witchcraft, hindrance, delays. Every spirit that want to keep you in suffering and torments. And bringing the glorious life of liberty prosperity, abundance, and good times and pleasures. The Bible said at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. David understood the God of pleasures forever and ever. The seed is an entrance into pleasures for your life.